Begin by removing the upper intake air tube that runs along the top of the valve cover. Please see our article on replacing spark plugs for more information on this procedure by following the link at the end of this video. Once removed, pull the black plastic cover off the valve cover, green arrow. Remove the cap covering the fuel pressure test port as indicated by the green arrow. Place a rag next to the Schrader valve, green arrow, and use a small screwdriver to press the valve down. This will bleed off pressure and fuel in the system. Disconnect the two 17mm fittings holding the feed and return fuel lines to the fuel rail as indicated by the green arrows. It's a good idea to have rag underneath as some fuel will probably spill out. You'll also need to counterhold the nuts built into the fuel rail using another wrench, indicated by the yellow arrows. Remove the small 5mm Allen screw holding the dipstick tube into the intake manifold, green arrow, and also disconnect the vacuum line going to the fuel pressure regulator, purple arrow. It also helps to pull the dipstick out and set it aside for the time being. Now disconnect the electrical connectors to each fuel injector by squeezing the two tabs together, green arrows, and pulling the connector off. It's very difficult to show the location of the 6mm bolts that hold the fuel rail to the intake manifold, so I've included this picture to demonstrate with the fuel rail already removed. Green arrows indicate the bolts location. Take your time as these bolts can be very difficult to remove. Now cut the zip ties holding the wiring loom to the fuel rail. Pull the loom free and pull the fuel rail up and out of the intake manifold. Now remove the four remaining 6mm bolts holding the intake manifold to the cylinder head, green arrows. Here you can see the two hose clamps, green arrows, on the front intake boot that connects the upper and lower parts of the intake manifold. Unscrew the 17mm nut on the vacuum connection on the lower metal manifold to the brake booster to gain a bit more room, as indicated by the purple arrow. This picture shows the hose clamps on the rear boot looking up from under the car. This is about the only way you will reach these clamps. Once these hoses are loose, you can pull up on the intake manifold enough to disconnect a couple of more harnesses that run through the runners. Once the intake has been elevated, you can disconnect the wiring harness going to the throttle body and feed it back through the runners on the intake manifold. Lift up the locking tab, green arrow, on the harness and pull the connector out of the throttle body. You'll also need to feed the wires back for the throttle body electrical connector, two knock sensor connections, the connection for the air renaissance flap, and also for the oil level sender. Shown here is the rear branch of wires, indicated by the green arrow. There will be one at the front as well. Shown here is the front knock sensor, green arrow, with the harness already removed. Note the manifold and electrical connector have been removed for clarity, it is very difficult to photograph this with the manifold in place. Remove the electrical connector going to the rear knock sensor, green arrow, and feed it up from between the intake runners. Note here the harness has already been removed. Now remove the electrical connector going to the oil level sender, green arrow, on the oil pan and feed it up from between the manifold runners. In this picture, you can see the two hoses that attach to the underside of the intake manifold. In our case, I simply could not get any tool in there with the manifold attached to remove the clamps. Instead, the hoses snap the second I put a small bit of upward force on them. You'll want to remove the clamps and what's left of the hose. You can see the hose clamp that holds the intake boot to the throttle body, yellow arrow. Also remove all the old intake manifold gaskets, purple arrow, from the manifold. Shown here is the engine with the intake manifold removed. You'll note some of the vacuum hose connections that should be inspected for cracks. It's a good idea to replace all the rubber connectors while you're in there. Shown here are the new intake boots 
fitted to the lower metal portion of the intake manifold, Green Arrow. Also shown here are the various vacuum hoses and connections on the lower manifold. The two larger hoses to the underside of the intake manifold, Purple Arrows, as well as the smaller hose connection that should be replaced, Yellow Arrows. Also, don't forget to also reconnect the vacuum line to the brake booster as indicated by the blue arrow. Note that the throttle body has been removed from the manifold in this car for clarity. Attach the new vacuum hoses to the bottom of the intake manifold, green arrows, with a new hose clamp and place the new intake manifold gaskets into the grooves in the end of each intake runner. Now place the new vacuum connectors in place on the lower manifold as indicated by the green arrows along with a vacuum connection to the throttle body, purple arrow. Clean the mating surfaces on the cylinder head and also make sure that there are two locating dowels, green arrows, are in place on the cylinder head. Place the intake manifold back in position next to the engine. Attach the lower ends of the hoses on the upper manifold to the connections on the engine, green arrow, and run the wiring harness through the runners on the intake manifold. Reconnect the harness to the throttle body. Reconnect the harness going to both knock sensors, front sensors shown by the purple arrow, and also the oil level sender. Seat the manifold into the boots on the end of the lower metal manifold and secure the hose clamps. Seat the throttle body intake boot back onto the top of the throttle body and tighten the 7mm hose clamp as indicated by the green arrow. It's advisable to replace the O-rings that hold the fuel injectors to both the fuel rail and also the intake manifold, as indicated by the green arrows. Please see our article on fuel injector replacement for more information by following the link at the end of this video. I chose to replace the internal hex bolts used on the M104 engine with conventional hex bolt heads, green arrows, should I ever need to remove it again. This will make it much easier. The bolt side you'll need is M8 by 50. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.